Hello! So this is going to be a slightly different video that I've, I've made. This is the first time I'm making a video like this. Uh, and this is going to be, I suppose we could call it a little production rundown uh, on my new single, which is going to be the first from my new album called Rediscovered and the singles called Rediscovered as well. And so for me, I always love watching these types of videos uh, on YouTube because I just find the whole creative process very interesting and also it can be inspiring as well. I always tend to pick up these little tips or interesting workflows uh, which I may have not come up with myself. So yeah, I hope you find this interesting and yeah, let's just kind of work through the song. So yeah, this first one's called Rediscovered. And I think actually this was the beginning of this album. So I think the original session file for this dates all the way back to I think 2021. Uh, yeah, so that I just a lot of the times for the files, the way I name them, it'll either be the month and the year, uh, or maybe if there is a particular vibe I'm going for, but I'm pretty sure this one was just July 2021. So we'll start off with the guitars. So I'll just play the intro. So yeah, this song, it started with just four chord shapes, really. So yeah, it's just them four chord shapes. And a lot of the times when I come up with a little chord progression that I like, I then try and think of an interesting right hand finger picking pattern for it. And really with this song, it basically is just them four chords throughout all of it uh, for, for the most part. And so what I like to do is that if I have any available fingers uh, from a chord shape, I'll then just experiment putting them uh, on different strings, on different frets until I hear a note that fits with the chord or just sounds pretty interesting. So that's how I come up with the intro. I just chuck that little slide in there at the end uh, to get me back up uh, round to the beginning of that first chord. And now this is where an available finger, I just tried it out. I was like, nice. So just adding in them two middle chords, just adding that extra little note in there, just keeps it more interesting, really, as opposed to just repeating them first four chords over and over, that would get a little bit uh, boring, repetitive, and maybe a little bit predictable as well. After that, I was like, cool, that'd be a, a nice intro. And then for the chorus, same chords, just a different picking pattern. And so with this one, I wanted to pick up the, the energy a bit. So instead of having kind of some sustained notes or some gaps between the chords, I just came up with a pattern that just kept chugging away with the right hand. It's just the same four shapes, but with a slightly different finger picking pattern with the, the right hand. So 
So it, again, it's going back to using available fingers, adding them, removing them, and that's how I'm able to add a, a nice little melody on top of that finger picking pattern uh, that we played for the for the chorus there. For the verse, I'm just using the same chords again, and it's a slightly different finger picking pattern. And so for this, I wanted it to have some uh, contrast and variation to the chorus. So the chorus is very picky uh, and it's kind of just a constant rhythm. And so with the verse, it's similar. There is a constant rhythm. It's a different rhythm. And I'm kind of playing less notes for, for the chords. So because of that, it makes it feel a bit more open and then it leaves room for a melody line uh, to work with it. So for the, the verse... So pretty much the same four chords. And again, using that little slide, uh, yeah, it's a little recurring uh, part of the song. And then for the end of the verse, I wanted to add a little bit of variation into it and also to help kind of send the song into the chorus. And so for that part, I played this. So just adding that little yeah, variation at the end there. And again, that's something I try to do a lot. Instead of always just repeating chord progression, that second repetition, try and vary it slightly, you know. So as you can see, the chords are exactly the same, but I just finished it off with a slightly different pattern with the right hand, and it just keeps it uh, a bit more interesting for the listener and also for you uh, when you're when you're playing it. And so really, that's the main bulk of the song. So four chord shapes, and I suppose three different finger picking patterns. You got the intro, where it's a lot more uh, sparse. Then the, the verse. chorus again same chord just different right hand pattern and that's the bulk of the the song really once I got them parts down then that's when I uh, start to think of a melody or a lead line that could work with that and so for the verse what I would do I would just loop the little eight bar loop or however long it is I'd loop it over and over and just improvise on top of it until I started to kind of hear something that I liked and then you kind of develop it from there. What I'll do actually, I'll just solo the verse guitars. So this is what it sounds like. So as you can hear, loads of reverb on that lead guitar, which I like to do. It's just nice to chuck a load of reverb on because uh, it kind of it helps to sustain the notes and helps to fill it out a little bit. Uh, and it just created the sort of vibe and atmosphere that I was that I was aiming for. With the chorus, again, this is where the rhythm guitar has got more energy and it's got this nice constant rhythm. And so again, with the lead, I wanted it to be pretty sparse so that it doesn't conflict too much with the main rhythm guitar, but to help kind of build it up from the verse melody, I like the idea of yeah, playing two notes together. So instead of playing one note uh, at a time, 
I'm just stacking it up. So I suppose I'm adding a harmony, essentially. So I got the two notes playing uh, together. So again, just to thicken it up, and again, it just yeah, you know, kind of created the the vibe and the the sound that I was going for. So yeah, I'll play just the chorus guitars. Lots and lots of reverb on that lead guitar. And so that's pretty much all of the guitar work, apart from the bridge, and that's where I wanted to introduce a slightly new part, just because by that point you would have heard the intro, which is, you know, a kind of unique part, but then it was chorus, verse, chorus, verse. And so by that point, it might be getting a little bit predictable or, or repetitive. For the bridge, I pretty much use the same chords. I just change the order uh, of the chord progression. And then again, used available fingers to add a little melody in there uh, just to, yeah, keep it nice, nice and varied. Whenever I'm writing a song, instead of coming up with, say, a chord progression, which might be four, eight bars long, however long, and then instead of recording that and then starting to layer it all up, uh, I like to come up with one section that I feel pretty confident with, and then I'll try and write another section straight away. Because what I tend to find is that if I just come up with the one idea and then I start adding bass and drums and, and whatever, I tend to get stuck in that loop. So then once I finish that section and then it's time to vary it or change to a new section, sometimes I can struggle when I get to that point. So what I what I find that I do now is I don't really worry about layers at the beginning. As long as I get two ideas which are different but they fit together, then for me I'm like cool, I've got the beginnings of, of a song potentially. Uh, and so that's what I've done really just from the intro and that more kind of finger pick part there. I was thinking that's enough ideas to, to make a song. And then, you know, you could add a third section in or add more variations. But I think for me, as long as I get the two parts, I'm happy. A lot of the times, once I have the guitar finished, that's when I'll start wanting to add some bass to it. And so definitely with this album, I didn't want to give myself any restrictions or limitations because the previous one uh, that I released called Wandering, I just got a new uh, kind of little travel acoustic guitar and I thought it'd be cool just to write a whole album just with that guitar. Then all I did with that is just add some uh, bass guitar to it. Uh, whereas with this one, I was thinking if I want to add drums or electronic stuff or synths or sub bass or, you know, orchestral sounds, go for it. And so with this, I wanted to try and incorporate some of the yeah, kind of real guitar with more electronic elements. And I think one of the first things I added was uh, this 808 uh, bass to it. And it's just a, a preset in Reason. I didn't really do too much to it. I think all I'd done, yeah, I may have played about with some of these settings and I've added some automation on the release time for it. And it, and it just sounded nice straight away, really. Uh, with this, as you can see, um, there's just four notes there and they're pretty much just following the root notes of the, the chords that I'm playing. And then once we get to the chorus, just changing the rhythm, probably to follow a bit more of the rhythm from the, the rhythm guitar that we've got there. So that's synth bass, the 808. And then also what I like to do to help with transitions, I'll kind of resample a note and then I'll reverse it. So what I've got here is that bass synth reversed. 
just to help with the, the transitions. And I always like to, most of the time, is to layer up some actual real bass as well, because I find I like the the kind of sound of a real player playing bass, but then a lot of times I don't have that super subby low frequencies from, from a normal bass guitar. And I suppose for me, when I first started producing music, it was, yeah, I think back in 2010. And so back then, that's when dubstep was super popular. And so, yeah, some of the first songs that I ever made were dubstep tracks. Yeah, MIDI keyboard and trying to create all these like synth kind of growly uh, bass sounds. Uh, but ever since then, I just love sub bass, you know, even if it's kind of like this, a more chilled out finger pick uh, guitar. I just love that deep low end bass. And then I just layered it on top with the a normal bass guitar. The bass guitar and the sub are playing exactly the, the same thing. And then also with this song, so I wanted to add some more yeah, kind of electronic synth elements. I found, again, a nice preset in Reason and it's just following the bass notes. And so what I liked with that synth is it's nice and wide because with your sub bass, well, I think with most people with sub bass, you want to keep that nice and tight and in the middle of your mix. And the bass guitar is, again, doing the same. It's in the middle. But with this synth, having it nice and wide, it just creates a, uh, yeah, like a nice kind of like fat sound, which helps the impact of the chorus when it, when it kicks in. Another synthy element that I added into this was, I'm pretty sure using the same synth that I used for the wide bass, but I may have just EQ'd it slightly differently and changed the effects on there. Yeah, it's a nice kind of ping pong in delay and, and reverb on there. Just to add that electronic element, in, into the song. And then I have another version of that. Yeah, so that doesn't really have the ping pong delay, but it's got loads of reverb. And so this one's given me, I suppose, the, the sustain and the space for that sound I was looking for. Whereas this kind of main synth here is a lot more dry, so it helps for it to cut through. So if I put all the synth stuff uh, together, so it just adds uh, a nice bed for the guitars to sit on. And, and again, I just love that low subby bass and it definitely yeah, kind of fills out them frequencies and gives it that kind of oomph that, uh, that I like, really. For the, the synth, I suppose it's more towards the end. The synth gets a little bit more busy, let's say. What I've done in here is just playing little arpeggios, essentially, of the, of the chords that, that the guitars play in.
And so again, I've got both of these layered up. So one, the one we just heard is a super kind of reverb distant one. Then the other one is just to help it cut through. But then what I always like to do, as you can see, I always like having loads of reversed elements in here. And so what I'd done with that synth, I'd resampled it and then put it in reverse to help it transition into the next chord. And that's got very nice kind of stereo panning delay on there. And so if I add that in now with the synths, It just helps to fill it out and really, yeah, kind of send you into that next chord. And so for me, adding reverse elements adds so much to the song, actually. Uh, even, you know, with percussion, which we'll see a little bit later on, it just really can make stuff more impactful or it can smoothen out uh, going between two, two sections. So I'll always have these kind of reversed elements in there just uh, as like a nice kind of finishing touch almost. It really just helps kind of smoothen out uh, everything, really. That's all the, the synths, pretty much. Let's have a look at the percussion. That'll be the final thing. And so what I'll say with this song, actually, there isn't really too many elements going on. I have a rhythm guitar part and a lead guitar part. Then I'll have, what's that, maybe one or two synths, a bass synth, the sub, and then a real bass, guitar, and then percussion. So yeah, this one, there isn't hundreds of tracks or anything like that. And I think it kind of fits with the style of the song. It's kind of sparse, you know, and spacey. I don't really need a lot going on, you know, especially with finger picked guitar. I always find, uh, cause you're kind of like rattling out so many notes and, you know, at a fair pace, that can fill up a lot of the space in a song. So a lot of the times all this extra stuff I'm adding is just to reinforce what the guitar's doing pretty much. So instead of having counter melodies and, and or anything like that, it can just start to sound a bit too busy. Uh, so whereas for me, I'm thinking ultimately this is a guitar song and it just has some of this electronic synth stuff to yeah reinforce the guitar and help create the atmosphere and vibe. Uh, that I'm going for. So percussion, not too much going on with this. For the actual drum sounds, it's, I'm pretty sure, just a preset within, within reason. So, yeah, nice study kick. That kind of rim or kind of like wooden sort of snare sound. Didn't use that or that. I don't think I use that either. Yeah, so I think really I just use the kick and the, the snare sound for this song. And again, the kick and the snare is not really doing much. So very basic. Again, I think because the guitar's doing a lot, I just want to add just a light amount of percussion there just to yeah help reinforce it and create a nice kind of low end for it. But going back to when I was saying my first uh, songs that I made were dubstep. So from doing that, the snares in dubstep are heavily reverbed a lot of the time, or definitely back in 2010 or whenever it was. And so that has been a style that I've stuck with, really. So what I like to do is have the main drums very dry. There's no reverb on this at all. But then I'll duplicate that drum synth. But what I'll do with that, I'll then just drench that in reverb. And then I'll just copy over the elements that I want to be reverbed. And so in this case, it's just the, just the snare. So by doing it that way, I still get the nice attack of the dry snare. 
and so it doesn't get lost in the back of the mix. But then having the reverb snare separately, yeah, you, know, you can dial in how much reverb you want, the volume of that. So I just find it gives me way more options and control uh, for, for what I'm aiming for, really. And so most of my songs, I'll have the main drum kit and then I'll have a duplicate of it, but I have loads of reverb. Just because, yeah, that's like a style or a trait that uh, I like to have in, in my songs. And what we've got here is just a reversed snare. So I would sample the snare just on its own and then reverse it. And that helps to kind of bring us into the, the next snare hit. So again, it's something which is subtle, I feel like, but without it, it makes the snares maybe less impactful and a bit more sparse. Whereas with the reversed snares, it's kind of like sucking you in. So it's kind of like a lower, lower pitch down, probably a kick that I reverbed and resampled. And so yeah, percussion wise, I think that's all we've got for the, the verses. So if I add in the synth stuff with that. So it just creates a nice, yeah, sparse uh, kind of low end for, for the song, which is spot on because then it just leaves loads of room for the, the rhythm guitar and the lead guitar. Cool, and then in the chorus, it's building up and I wanted more energy in there. The kick drum pattern, I varied. And again, a lot of the times it's probably following some of my thumb picks, uh, rhythmic wise. And I've done the same, got the reverb snares with it. and the reverse snares as well. But then instead of programming a hi-hat, just because sometimes that can end up sounding a bit robotic, uh, you know, even if you adjust the velocities to make it sound more human, let's say. Uh, but a lot of the times I just like to record in an actual little shaker or tambourine or, or whatnot. Uh, with this, I recorded a little shaker Kind of like a wooden shaker. Just to add, I suppose, a bit more of a kind of higher end percussive uh, element to it. And with one of my, I think it's a foot tambourine that I've got, I think I just flicked the cymbal part on there and drenched it in reverb. And that made a nice kind of cymbal sound. And then to help bring in that cymbal sound, I resampled it and reversed it. Just to kind of help bring it in. So percussion wise for the chorus, yeah, little shaker, little foot tam cymbal, programmed kick and snare, lots of reverb on the snare and some reversed snare sounds. And I suppose the only variation is once we get towards the end of the song. This is where I wanted to bring more of like a four to the floor vibe to it. And again, reverb snares. 
the shaker looks to be exactly the same. Yeah, so the only difference really for that outro or the last chorus, change the kick pattern. And then because the kick had changed, I wanted the bass and then the sub bass to, to follow that as well. Uh, and then yeah, with the synths on there, that's where they're doing the little arpeggios of the chords. And the reverse synths in there as well. And the wide bass synth. And so that's pretty much all the, yeah, kind of percussive elements and the synth and bass that I added to the uh, main guitar rhythm and lead part. And that's pretty much the song, really. It all started with four chords, pretty much. And then I just thought, okay, what can I do to vary uh, the chords. So I like the chords, so they stayed the same, and it's more just the right hand adding variation. And so, yeah, once I had a couple parts with the slightly different right hand picking patterns, then I came up with the lead parts, and then, yeah, just added some sub bass and some bass guitar, and they're not really doing much, they're just following the bass notes, the root notes of the chords on the guitar. That's pretty much all the bass and sub are doing. And then the synthy stuff, yeah, very reverb to add a nice kind of vibe and to fill out the mix a bit as well. And it just creates a nice bed uh, for the, the guitars to, to sit on, really. So mixing-wise, what I like to do quite a lot, I always like to pan the guitars left and right uh, just to have that width. Uh, but what I like to do for the verse, I'll pan them just a little bit. So for the verse, panned it 40, and then the other guitar will be the same, panned right. But then when I get to the chorus, I pan them wider. So I find that that helps to make the chorus kind of impact and feel bigger when it goes a lot wider as well. And then also just volume wise, I tend to mix the verses a bit quieter compared to the chorus again to help with that impact for when you do get to the chorus. And then for mastering, let's say, yeah, this is kind of a stock reason mastering chain, but I've just slightly changed it a little bit and kind of dialed it in to where I can just turn it on and I'm happy with it. So the EQ isn't actually doing much, it's just doing a low cut and then I have a stereo imager, which just helps with the width, and then compress it slightly, and then finally use a limiter, just so I can make sure nothing's gonna clip, uh, and then also it just helps me to boost the overall volume of the song, just so I can get it to a good volume, so that it wouldn't be super quiet compared to other songs that you'd hear on Spotify or, or whatever. So yeah, so that is, the the production breakdown for Rediscovered. Yeah, I hope you found it interesting or picked up some little bits here and there. If not, thank you for watching it anyway. And yeah, check out my new song, Rediscovered. <laughs>